Be sure to head to FlipsideGaming.com and use promo code 6 for 10% off on orders over $10. You can do the same promo code at the Grizzly Gentleman for 10% off at checkout. Both of these are fantastic deals, and they help support the show. What is up, Planeswalkers? Steric 6, back with some more Magic the Gathering, and an Orgel Dweet. Uh, we are going to play some Abzan Midrange and Historic. Now, for those of you who have uh, been around to the channel for a while, uh, you, you might know that I'd like me some Abzan Midrange. The issue <laughs> is there are a lot of options, and I had... Th th this is where I started. Just gonna just gonna show you to let you know. This is, this is what I started with. I went through all of the Abzan cards and put in anything that seemed remotely viable. And then I realized I didn't have all that many slots. Oh, uh, by the way, I figured uh, someone someone in the comments said, uh, if I do this, hey, this will separate it out. So now we have uh, creatures up here and then everything else down here. So, um, sure. <laughs> I ended up going with this. And they're kind of just, like, the strongest cards, I think. Obviously, things will have to change. But, I'm going to try my best. This is a best of three video. Let's keep it do it. So, I'm running four Gilded Goose. The reason I'm not running uh, Lenora Elf is because uh, I am, you know, I'm running full Abzan. I do have, you know, I do have double green in here. But I also have double black and double white. Excuse me. So I wanted to make sure that I had a bit more variation in the color of mana I could be producing. Now, whether or not Gilded Goose is correct for this deck remains to be seen. It is possible that I could uh, cut the Gooses for potentially more two drops uh, and throw in some um, Temple to some Scrylands uh, to shore up that uh, the, the fact that I won't be playing anything on, on turn one. But I'm not entirely sure. What's nice about Gilded Goose as well, though, is that in the later half, later stages of the game against aggressive decks, if I have, you know, killed all of the things, I have a Gilded Goose, um, I can use the food not to make mana, because I probably won't need it later in the game, but instead to gain life. And uh, that is something that I did have to consider when choosing between Gilded Goose and something like Lenora Elves, or other, like, two mana uh, creatures. I have four Growth Chamber Guardians, two Tithe Takers, and two Heartless Axe. The reason I went with four Growth Chamber Guardians is because I have a an okay number, you know, essentially five, um, other spells, including Heartless Axe, uh, or as well as Heartless Axe, that I could be playing, uh, that I could hold up when I have that three mana. And if I plan on being able to use those early turns to, you know, I establish my Growth Chamber Guardian, uh, and then I hold up uh, some removal... If my opponent doesn't play anything uh, that I need to remove, I can just use Growth Timber Guardian to adapt, and it's it's a pretty decent rate. Uh, you're essentially getting a 5-mana 4-4 four, four that puts another bear into your hand. Um, what is interesting about this card is that if I somehow give it a plus 1, plus 1 counter in another way, say, for example, uh, via it coming back from Elspeth Conqueror's death uh, or activating Shalai, then I'll be able to go grab some more from the deck. There are several different reasons why I chose this as my cornerstone 2-drop. Um, the fact that it gives me those uh, play patterns, those those different choices, um, is absolutely the main one. Uh, the reason I like Abzan uh, mid-range specifically so much is so that I'm able to uh, have a lot of different choices throughout the game. And usually, uh, if I lose, it will hopefully be because I did something wrong, as opposed to... Nonsense. <laughs> but other reasons um, is because obviously it has some synergy with the deck. And then, it's it feels like just generally the most valuable card because it replaces itself, right? Um, obviously, it is a bit of a mana sink, um, but, you know, once you get later in the game, it's it's still fine, right? Like, uh, you know, you top deck this when you have six mana out, you play this, you immediately adapt it, uh, and then bada bing bada boom, you've essentially drawn a, a, an additional card um, for that turn, so... I feel like Growth Chamber Guardian is just generally the most uh, bang for my buck, but as you could see with the uh, the other quote unquote deck list, just the list of cards, there were a lot of options. Tie Tickers, my secondary, is, is is entirely born out of the fact that I just hate flesh. <laughs> I just really hate my opponents doing things on my turn, uh, so I plan on hitting them over the head by making them uh, pay a bit more. And of course, it's Tie Tickers nice because it can block twice against an aggressive deck. And it has two bodies against a control deck. So I really did try and put as much thought into um, each individual decision as possible. 
Two Heartless Acts. Now, I did get a question. Um, this, for what it's worth, was for a Bolus video, but I think it's still a decent place to share my thoughts. Uh, two Heartless Act, as opposed to Cast Down, as opposed to Tyrant, or not, well, not Tyrant Scorn in this one, but Tyrant Scorn for Bolus. Um, uh, and disappear whatever the whatever the newest two mana one i i can't remember what it's called uh i'm going with heartless act i'm gonna call it diminish i don't know if that's it i don't eh, i don't care uh i'm gonna call it diminish I, I might be wrong i don't care um the reason i went for heartless act is because it can kill questing beast that is the main reason right gruel is still a a powerhouse if not the powerhouse and heartless act is able to deal with that um very easily obviously there are other cards that heartless act will not deal with in the same deck for example you know if your opponent for some reason decides to give a plus one plus one counter to their um gruel the, the three mana ogre woman um i can't handle that if they have a um pelt collector who has a single counter on it right i can no longer kill that but i value the ability to cheaply remove questing beast because it allows me to do other things as well. Obviously, uh, Abzan has fantastic removal, um, and we'll get to some more of that in a second, but I just generally value the, the ability to deal with Questing Beast more. That said, um, it might be the case that since this deck does have fantastic other removal, that I might be able to get away with playing Diminish, because then Diminish will, one, be able to hit um, those smaller creatures that this can hit anyway, or that this couldn't hit, potentially. Uh, but it also can deal with things like Teferi. So, I'll have to kind of see not only um, how this deck plays in the metagame, but how the metagame changes. Excuse me. Speaking of some of that better removal, we have three Mythos of Netheroi. Kind of like the reason to play Abzan, in my opinion. Uh, this just gives you a an instant speed, very castable. You know, two in a single black is really nice. Uh, instant speed, creature kill spell. Right, it just blows up any creature. It's fantastic if it was just paid for black. But if we play full Abzan for this, we get to hit any non-land permanent. The, the, the sheer variety of things that we can get with this uh, is absolutely fantastic. As I said, this is like the reason to play Abzan, uh, and it might be the reason that a Heartless Act potentially gets pushed out for something more akin to Diminish, or something else entirely. I also have two Murderous Riders to uh, shore up a little bit of my three mana removal. Uh, Murder Shrider, the reason I chose Murder Shrider is essentially because it plays two roles. Uh, one, it can be a removal if need be, especially against Planeswalkers. Um, or it can be a creature if need be. As you can see, like, I felt it, it was very hard to put this deck together because I was working with so many cards that I wanted to include and so many cards that I felt were kind of necessary shoe-ins for the deck. So being able to have something like Murder Shrider that can uh, pull double duty, uh, I think is is really important. Two Lava Brink Venturers. This is just an annoying to deal with 3-3. Three, three. Um, it's going to take uh, more metagame knowledge on my part in order for me to really uh, use this card to its fullest potential, but I do think, generally speaking, that this is, hopefully, just a, a nice card to have. Three Night of Autumns. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I absolutely adore this card. Probably uh, one of my favorite cards on Arena right now because it is so modular, and, uh, you know, that's, that's definitely something that you'll hear me say more uh, in this video. I can make it a beefy a beefy lady in order to hit fools. Uh, I can I can blow up an artifact or an enchantment, or I can just gain four life and use it as a blocker against the aggressive decks. Just absolute uh, absolute unit, fantastic card. Two Shalais, two Questing Beasts, and three Boneyard Lurkers. The two Shalais should be relatively obvious. It allows all of the rest of my threats, all of my other creatures, all of my Planeswalkers to have hexproof. Right? It means that they have to deal with Shalai before they can deal with anything else. After that, she is a decent blocker, you know, a 4-mana, easy to cast, 3-4 flyer is nice, you know, you're able to, to block 3x's, and you're able to not just die to a lightning strike. She also has the added uh, benefit of that 6-mana activated ability. Once again, like, if you get into the later part of a game, especially against a control deck, where, you know, you just have a couple creatures out, you may not need to develop more on the board until your opponent deals with that, because at the end of their turn, you can be using this. And since we do have things like Heartless Act, like um, Murderous Rider and Mythos, we have things to potentially do at instant speed. So even if our opponent does do something which we want to respond to, we will likely have something to do. Two Questing Beast. Questing Beast is just super strong. It is possible I should just be running three or four, but I wanted to play with other damn cards, all right? <laughs> like, everyone knows Questing Beast is good. Look at all the words on it. 
I'm moving on. Three Boneyard Lurker. This deck is a deck that uses a lot of permanents. Um, obviously, we do have, you know, some just non-permanents. One casualties, then these. So that's, you know, six total. But the fact of the matter is... I have the potential to, one, beef up one of my other creatures. For example, a Gilded Goose. And two... I can just get back some things that have been destroyed or discarded or etc. etc. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I want this card to be great. I don't know if it will be. One Elder Gargoth. I I, I could only find room for like four or five drops in this deck. Um, I, I was initially going to do two and two of like uh, Elspeth Conquers Death and Elder Gargoth. And I was like, I really want to play Vivian... But there are two Vivians that I wanted to play, and it's like, eh. So I wanted, I decided to play with new Vivian, uh, mon er, not a eh, new Vivian, Monsters Advocate, um, because it allows me to do potentially uh, really cool stuff with, like, grabbing a Shalai into, excuse me, a Lava Brink Venture or a Night of Autumn or something like that. Um, and then, of course, the fact that she just gives me dudes all day long. Elder Gargoth does a very similar thing. The main issue that I have is that this card requires it to, you know, stay alive for a turn so I can get the attack value. Obviously, you know, like, like there's no way an opponent attacks into this, which is very nice. But <laughs> it does have to live until it can attack. If it can attack, it's pretty damn good. You know, 5 mana, 6-6, six, six, Vigilance, Reach, Trample, has a bunch of text. Theoretically, this card should be as good as Questing Beast, except Questing Beast is Haste, and Haste is generally speaking better. Um, yeah, so I, I really like this card, does does all the things. And then, of course, Elspeth Conquers Death. It's Conquers Death. Like, it just does all of the things. It gets rid of the annoying things. It makes your opponents not have a good time. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, then, of course, we have two six drops, two Vraska, Relic Seeker. Um, obviously, the six mana Planeswalker spot had a lot of com competition. I did I did look realistically consider Garrick plus, um, uh... So six mana Garrick and have four, uh, four mana Garrick in the deck, but four mana Garrick got very easily beat out. Four uh, four CMC I think was the hardest CMC for me to uh, narrow down, just because the sh the sheer number of uh, of playables there. Um, and when I realized that four mana Garrick got edged out, I felt that Vraska's minus three was just better than uh, other Garrick's minus three, even though Garrick's um, plus zero is better, in my opinion, than uh, Vraska's plus zero. Now, you know, the Menace is nice, but having two two twos is a little bit better. Um, obviously, if she ultimates, you win the game, but like, yeah, so. And then, of course, Casualties of War, it's just a one of um, for the sticky situations, and or the times when I can just blow my opponent completely out of the water. Um, this is the mana base. It probably could be better. Um, actually, I realized I didn't actually check the mana base, and I probably should really quick. Excuse me, really quickly. Um, and I will go ahead and talk about the sideboard as well. So in the sideboard, we have three disfigures for aggro. Pretty pretty obvious. Makes Should make a lot of sense. Three Agony's Remorse. This is generally speaking for uh, combo or control decks. Now, I did consider uh, Duress, but I felt that having the, um, the versatility of Agonizing Remorse over that was a little bit better, especially since this can hit cards in the graveyard, and it does exile. Three Scoos. It exiles things. Scoos is just great. Two timely reinforcements. Um, aggro. That's is, is, uh, is pretty much it. Timely reinforcements is fantastic. One card of the Canarium, one Shadow of the Sky, both uh, against aggro as well. Although Shadow of the Sky can come in against uh, other decks that play just a ton of uh, larger creatures, essentially uh, three power and more. And then two Shifting Ceratops for anything that is blue. So bef just really quickly before I actually... Before I actually start the games. Where's my ugly face? There we go. Uh, yeah, so this, the mana base should be fine. Uh, the only one that I might have issues with is Murderous Rider, and that is something that I, uh, expected and accept. So, traditional historic ranked, abs and mid, let's play some games. I'm not played with this deck yet, um, I'm hoping abs and mid, uh, becomes similar to Bolas on the channel. Not as close, but it is something that I want to have, uh, recurring, um, even if it is only, like, every two weeks or three weeks or something. So I think we have to mulligan this hand. Uh, only two lands is pretty bad for us. Um, obviously, like having the ability to play uh, Guardian on turn two is nice, but the two lands plus the double Relic Seeker, I think, uh, I think make this a mulligan. Now this hand is a lot better, so we'll keep this and 
So we definitely goose on one. I could potentially venture on two. I mean, I I want to keep the Vraska. However, realistically speaking, that would be a greed play. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's just correct to, to eat the Vraska here. This is going to be a longer video, by the way. Um, you also might know uh, I got that new drip. All right, so it looks like we're going against some mono white life gain. So I can theoretically make this two mana, or, or even, I should say. Um, and that might do quite a good job at uh, dealing with certain things. Oftentimes, the removal is going to be even uh, in the form of the uh, enchantments. Uh, I'm not going to block that. I, there's there's not really a reason to jeopardize my Guilty Goose like that. Like, the one damage shouldn't be an issue. Okay. Pride mate, sure, sure. Okay. So now we're getting all the lands, but it should be okay. And we're going to do even, so this means we'll essentially we'll be able to block um, Pride mate all day long. Okay, so next turn I can play a Godless Shrine tapped. Legion's Landing, sure, sure. Godless Bodyguard protects the Pride Mate, sure, sure. I assume, right? Can I, can I see this, please? Interesting. So they missed a land drop. So I'm going to play the planes here. I'm, I'm able to use Mythos of Nethroid to potentially hit Legion's Landing. And I think I'm going to give my opponent the opportunity to get screwed by it. So did they draw land here? That makes me think that they didn't draw land. So the Pride Mate will get quite large, but I will be able to take out the Vanguard. If they choose to attack with it, and they might not. They do. Okay, that's fine. This deck does have humans and non-humans. I think I'm still gonna try and block here. This could be a mistake, but... You know, fight is won. I did think that they might have it, and they had it. Two, four, six, seven. So I'm at one here. Um, I actually shouldn't have played Growth Chamber Guardian. I'm giving them more information. My opponent, of course, is deciding not to give me any more information, uh, which is the correct thing to do.
Okay. So this is actually this is actually white weenie that has a uh, a lifeling a lifeling uh, a life gain slant to it. Yeah, this is this is much more like uh, white weenie, which means which means the fact that I got pretty unlucky with that life gain is unfortunate. Um, I do think time reinforcements is good. I think shadow sky is great. Disfigures, uh, cries, um, just those in general. Uh, I take out tie tickers. I don't think it's as important. Um, Kazu's war is very slow. Conquer's death doesn't hit like anything in the deck. Um, let's see. Da -da -da. Boneyard lurker. Bon. It, Boneyard Lurker is um, a bit more for the, the value-oriented matchups. Okay, Let's see if we can get a better hand here. It's possible I could have kept the uh, the opener. But I'm, I'm, in general, I'm going to try to be less greedy. Um, yeah. I'm going I'm to try and be a little less greedy when it comes to the games. Uh, at least with this deck. <laughs> First. That's a no. This is a sure, and we'll keep this. Um, and I think I'm going to yeet... Murderous Rider? I play this one to one. So I can cast Murderous Rider. Uh, maybe I hit Red Chamber Guardian? So I'm playing Goose on one. Thing is, I might be able to Guardian... on two by playing this and that way I get to keep this around so maybe I hit the knight of autumn here opponent also mulliganed once see if they have anything else nope also realizing that uh, they don't have a pet so I'm very surprised at that at this point Let's hawk, sure. I'm gonna play the guardian here. My opponent might have a pride mate. Which would, once again, be kind of unlucky. Like, it looked like my opponent had a lot of... No, nope, Legion of Landing, sure. It does look like my opponent has a lot of other non-lifelink cards. We fuck here. Jeez. Little did I know, I should have uh, gotten a land. So this is going to flip, unfortunately. I should have gotten rid of land, sorry. And I uh, should have kept the Knight of Autumn. I will lose life for that. Pass. I might kill a Halo's Hawk if my opponent just goes to combat. Okay, another Hawk. I would love a Cry of the Canary. I would really, really love a Cry of the Canary. Yeah, another goose isn't really what I'm looking for, cheat. Hmm. The issue is I might need this goose to chump later. <sighs> if 
That is very unfortunate. We have drawn three lands and a goose. Um, I mean, I get to Growth Jumper Guardian, I suppose. rather not go to six I mean I guess no matter what so so if I if I play this right untapped to play this I would go to six but I'd have two blockers if I don't then I tap this I, I would be functionally losing the same life but the reason it's actually better I think to play this untapped is because these could be larger right so I think it technically is better for me to pay two life for this not by a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm still in a really rough spot because I've been drawing very poorly. Um, do I attack with the rider? I don't. I don't think I do. They get another two-two, or they get a one-one. Luckily. And so as of right now, I'm really not loving the goose. Let's block one of these. Um. If I top deck a six drop. Yeah, I think I'll block one of these for now. My opponent does not need to add anything else to the board. And a bottom. And a bottom gains four life, which is nice. attack with the murdered rider. Yeah, they're just going to keep uh, pooping out 1-1s, one unfortunately. block. Um, I want to use Growth Jumper Guardian or do I want to use the Goose to have another... I think I need to use the Goose to have another food. Block to Dablage. For another food. So I have functional 10 life. <sighs> White Weedy at his Crispus. Uh, Disfigure does not do a ton. This. I might need that. All of the stuff is instant speed. And I don't plan on playing another one of these anyway, so I'm just going to pass the turn. Yeah, this. This looks pretty unwinnable for me, unfortunately. Sure. Yep, just those. So I'll just figure one of them. Well, attempt to disfigure one of them. Okay, so that's five. Could still use that uh, cry the canary, although I only have one, so it's probable I need more. Maybe I should just have screws in the main deck. I'm not sure. Come on, 
Really? No, I'm just dead. Uh, I can attack here, I'd get to four. No, I guess I can go to seven. Although, no, all of these come in. Block, block. So yeah, I could use this. I'm just gonna use it now. Like, I have no cards in hand. Uh, I just don't feel like doing math without having all of the math in my face. So, take action. Get this out of my graveyard. Um, so I'd have, I have to attack with this. And then I'd have to block those two, that one. No, I'm dead. Damn. Okay. So we're not going to judge the deck after one match. Yeah, that, that really isn't something that you should do. Um, although, so several things concern me. I don't think Gilded Goose is what I need. Um, I think it would actually be better for me if I added in uh, like three more two drops and another three drop. Uh, especially ones that can mitigate um, mana in some way. So not like actual like ramp creatures, but things that can do things with, with lands, similar to Growth Timber Guardian. Um, I will keep this one. Um, I think we just play out the Triome here. Do this on turn two. Yeah. Possibly that's wrong. Uh, it's possible that I should have started with this, gone into this, uh, because potentially we would have uh, drawn another land by then, but I don't I don't want to potentially anything. So, that's uh, awkward. But, sure. So our opponent is on um, four color ramp, I guess. This is likely some sort of combo deck. Um, I do not need Night of Autumn right now, so I think the correct decision is to attack with my Guardian. Open the blocks, sure. Use my Guardian. So yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't need my knight any, or yeah, I didn't need to use my knight this turn anyway. Uh, I'm just interested in seeing. So far, I've seen everything. Like so far, it's it's blackless, but that might not be the case. Um, they could be playing five color shrines. Um. They could just be playing four color good stuff. You can definitely get away with that. Okay, four colors so far. Tethers to bounce the Guardian, I assume. This isn't a fight you can win. Yep. That Not is fine with me. That is one of the reasons why I have Questing Beast. Beast is just real, real strong. I suppose that's how it was meant to okay. happen. Make sure I'll be on five, so I'll probably venture and. Guardian. Okay, so it's a Field of the Dead list. So I assume it is five colors. I assume this is uh, Golos and shit, too. Uh, I could kill that with Night of Autumn, but I think it's better for me to just name evens with this. So I think I just... Well, I can't attack with them anyway, so I might as well hit my opponent for four. Um, I evens with this, and I think I just play... Shrine Guardian. Next turn, I can cycle this and activate this, or activate this, play this, etc., etc. I got a bunch of choices. Okay. No surprise, Questing Beast is real strong. <laughs> Golos. Golos can die. Uh, my opponent will have a Field of the Dead token, but that cannot be blocked. Uh, that that cannot block, excuse me, um, Questing Beast nor Venturer. So my opponent will be taking 7 down to 5. And I can actually activate my Gross Chamber Guardian as well, if I want to. So this is Blacklist, it appears, which is very strange, because they have, they do have Golos. Unless they have a Black Source in hand that they're going to play anyway, so... Gargoth's cool. 
Gurkhoff doesn't kill. Golos. I mean, my opponent just blocks with Solemn. So I think what I actually do is just attack with these. They can't block. And then I hold up a uh, Triome to cycle. I mean, technically I'm holding this up as well. But it's mostly for Triome to cycle here. Uh, sure, you got some more zombies that cannot block either of my creatures. So probably, if I if I get rid of the Gilded Goose, I can also justify going up to... Well, it does take you out of lethal range, unfortunately. Um, I could justify putting the fourth Triome in. Curses. They literally might as well, yeah. I I do not block ever. I might play goal second main. Which would suck for me. Be pretty good for my opponent. Cross spiral, okay. Grazer. Grazer can block the venture. Damn, that sucks. Second like this. No. And I think I still attack with these. Force the Grazer to die. They can get this back anyway. Look, oh, it's it's odd though. Son of a bastard. Play Gargoth. And I might as well play this as well. So I presume that they're gonna play Uro here. We've got nine mana. Two Heartless Axe. Two Murder Riders. Yep. This is uh, my worst three. I don't know why I'm counting like this. There's what? Seven? So that's what? Seven? There we go. Um, shoot. Uh, the three Killy Kills. Plus I got the, the two more. Yeah, I, I mean, I got a lot of removal. But at this point, the, the Golos as well really fucked me here. They've only gone, what, 22? Mythos of Nethroi. So I would have been able to do one or the other, but not both, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I can swing all and see what happens. Does this mean I win? Yeah, get fucked. Get utterly fucked. Feel that. Stay with this. Kill that. Pay with this. Fuck you. Apologies for the profanity. But they can't block beast or venturer. This is this is one of, this is like the reason, right? that I really like Venture here. Uh, one, it can block Questing Beast uh, and survive. Oh, wait. Questing Beast, never mind. It says combat damage that would be dealt to creatures. Wait. Combat damage. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. I'm pretty sure Lava Brink protection. Um, 
I don't know if it technically can, I don't, I don't, and I also don't care. Uh, so against this, um, I do want Cry the Canarium. Um, Shadow Sky is also probably worth it. Same with Agonizing Remorses. I don't think I need those. Um, this is definitely worth keeping. Um, we're going second. They don't have... I don't think they're going to have a lot of kill spells, so I actually don't think I want Boneyard Lurker here. Uh, Lurker's for when my shit dies. Um, give two. I could get rid of Tithe Taker. Because they don't really do things on my turn. And the 2 1 gets outclassed. So I think I'll do this. Could be wrong, but uh, I'm hoping it isn't. Okay, let's roll. My opponent mulliganed. Um, I don't think I do. Uh, turn three here, I'm able to uh, either cast... Well, I might not be able to cast Murder Rider because I plan on cycling this in Doth the Triome. Um, I do think I keep this hand, though. I don't know. Could be... It, it, it could be, the, like, a greedy play, but I'm just not sure. Sure. Shadow of the Sky. Sure. Unfortunately, those are supposed to be cards that I draw like later on in the game, when I need them. I would love an Agonizer Remorse off the top. So this is four color field. Next. Um. It's unfortunate. Should have kept that in mind. I'm just gonna do this. Cool. And I've got a cemetery, which means that I don't need that anymore. Um, so I can murder Golos if they play one. If they don't play anything I want to kill, then I just cycle my Triome. Oh, they did nothing. I cycle my Triome. Guardian. I can play. I can play Guardian and hold up the adaptation as well as the Moomin Rider. So I shall do that. Do have another land? Okay. Conquer's death doesn't hit anything on this board. I think what I do is I... I think I play my... Forest? Well, I'm gonna attack first, actually. Can I please go to combat? Sure. 
Yeah, I'm trying to play my forest. I assume they're gonna blow up my goblet shrine, and this essentially is a ploy for me to, to do it. Um, but yeah, I think I just play my Growth Timber Guardian. Still hold up Murder Rider. Still, I can hold up making an egg, although I'm probably not gonna do that. Um, and then, of course, I can hold up my Growth Timber Guardian. I don't know if I said that. Yeah, them doing nothing is great for me. Hopefully. I, I don't know what actually they have in their hand, but... This is, this is like, why I want... Like, this is why I'm using Growth Timber Guardian. Um, I, I feel like I want to save Couch's War, to be honest. I think first things first, we attack. That seems very desperate to me. So I think, once again, my second verse same as the first here. I mean, I guess they could wipe my board. But all of these creatures were from a single growth chamber guardian. So like, even if they wipe my board, I don't actually lose out on that much card advantage. Golos? Sure, sure. So, yeah, now I'm gonna use my casualties. Although they do only, they do have two fields. But still, I think it's fine to use casualties here. Gotta get rid of two of the things. We take action. Uh, this, this is, this is the reason why I, I have Gortimer Guardian. Okay, so we're going to do Artifact, Creature, Lands. That is Artifact. This is Creature. This is Lands. Attack for 12. They block one of them. They take 8. If they cast another Golos, I can Conqueror's Death it. Arrow. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. We do get to scry. Get it on top. Not exactly what I like to see, but still. play another guardian like like i am technically walking into a potential board wipe the thing is this is why i i value growth chamber guardian so highly is that even if i have if my opponent board wipes me my hand size is still essentially the same so that is unfortunate because they get exiled shoot i can't just else with conquers that though I actually think I want to hit Uro with the Conqueror's Death. So I think I'm going to Murder Strider this. Yeah. I think that's technically better. Oh! Hell yeah, dude. One, two, three. Four. Yeah, so they're probably going to play this next turn. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Shoot. Can't play everything, so I will just play the Vivian and the Goose. And we will make a Beastie. And we'll give it... Trample. Give it Trample, because I can push damage a little bit. Rejuvenator, sure. Although, now they can't cast... 
Euro. Although I guess they don't technically need to. Sure. I'm actually just going to block with both. Because I'm going to exile these. Yeah. Block, block. I'm going to wipe away the world. I'll wipe the board and melt with you. You see the difference and we're getting board wiped all the time. There's nothing board wipes I won't do. I'll wipe the world and melt with you. So this way I only get through one damage, but if I didn't do it this way, I probably wouldn't have gotten through any damage. Um, is it worth it to... Minus here? No. Uh, I am worried about a second Ugin, to be honest. But... Keslevi, I guess. So I could technically minus two. What the heck could I get, even? I took out the Tide Ticker, so I don't actually think I can get anything. I didn't bring in the Scoozes. Because that's with lesser? Yeah, I'm just going to plus and triple. Um, Every day is a new mutation. I'm gonna, I'll play the Bridge Rider as well. Uh, kind of whipping into walking into another boardway put. I mean, it's really difficult to to deal with Eugene. Shatter. Sure. So I do assume my opponent is now going to cast it, bro. No, they play Golos. Okay. Okay. I'm probably just gonna wipe the board. Opponent's gonna get another Field of the Dead. Their last one. Yep. Ooh! That's quite good. So we shatter the sky. Let me play this off the top. Put my opponent to three. My opponent has to play an actual creature in order to not die. I mean, I guess they could blow up the board up again. Um, but in order to not die to questing piece, they have to get an actual creature down. I'd like you to meet my friend, Stompy. Which is which is Euro. Uh, and then I get to Elspeth Conquer's death, Euro, and I win. If that came in untapped, I would be a little worried, but it did not. So my opponent has died. Au revoir, Nusa. Au revoir. Luckily, I can still cast that. Okay. Well, they're still alive. Oh! What could, I, what could I have gotten for three? Nothing would have mattered. I don't think anything would have been better than just getting a, a trample beast here. Diversity is our greatest strength. No, I don't think so. What? Right, Shadow of the Sky, my opponent's holding on. Damn, this stuff's gonna cost more. Um, when this offloads, though, we'll be in a pretty decent spot. Uh, gonna play Lava Brink off the top. We're gonna name Even, for obvious reasons. 
I'm gonna play this off the top. And we're gonna play this off the top. I, I don't think there's anything for three that I want to grab. Shout out to Vivian. I'd like you to meet my friend, Stompy. Meet my sweet board. Uh, am I going to play this lava brink? Sure. Because even if they wipe my board this turn, we'll actually die. Even if they wipe my board this turn, um, I'd like to, I'd like to do battle food. What? Whatever. Uh, I would have gotten the last part of Conquer's death. Okay. Okay, so. What am I thinking about the deck as at present? I think that Gold Chamber Guardian showed its worth. Um, I, I do think that Guardian is definitely what I'm looking for here. Um, I might... I mean, the sideboard obviously needs constant evaluation and reevaluation uh, in order to figure out what exactly I'm looking for. It's possible that Tide Taker should just be two main deck scavenging oozes, to be honest. Um, that's just generally how strong Scooze is. Um, Gilded Goose. I'm really, I'm really iffy on it. Uh, with 24 lands, I feel like I can consistently get to um, my higher end cards. So I might want to cut out a couple of Gooses. Uh, right now I have six two drops. I'd like to up that to eight, probably. And currently I have ten threes, and I might want to up. <sighs> I might want to up my fours as well. I'm not sure, um, but I am. I am feeling like Gilded Goose uh, is worth worthy of a cut potentially. Um, obviously, like it, it had benefits there, so I'm not saying it should be gone out right. Um, I I like the idea of Tide Taker, but Scoos is just so generally strong. Uh, Lava Brink showed its worth, in my opinion. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm really satisfied with the threes. The threes was, like, the easiest thing to do. Um, I knew I wanted to to play with Venturer, um, and I knew, like, the rest of these were going to be shoe-ins. Um, Boner Lurker, we didn't actually get to kind of see in action. Uh, I'm going to play with this a little bit more, but it's possible I should just be playing Maximal Quest and Beasts <laughs> here. Um, Gargoth was, like, the weakest of these, but I'm not writing it off just yet. Um... Conquer's Death is Conquer's Death. Vivian did fantastically. Um, I Theoretically, I could up to two Casualties of War just because uh, of how incredibly strong that card can be. That's the ceiling on is quite high. Um, let's see, out of here... Um, theoretically, I might want another Pry of the Canary instead of Disfigure. Yeah, I might want another Cry of the Canary instead of Disfigure. Um... For what it's worth, like having having less fewer gilded goose or no gilded goose does make the additional crowd canaries a little bit better. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hop over here really quick to kind of look at other um, options for those slots. I did consider uh, both selfless savior and alcid for the one drop slot, but generally speaking, I think I don't I don't think I need these per se. Um, Unfortunately, they do different things, right? Like, Selfless Savior would allow me to deal with um, Annoying Board Wipes, and Life's Bounty would allow me to deal with Targeted Removal, but not just things that destroy. So it would allow me to protect against things like Teferi Bounce, um, Aether Gust, for example. But even though they're both good in their own different ways, I don't think either of them is individually versatile enough for me to value it over over Gilded Goose or over just yeeting the one-drop slot. I did consider Knight of the Ebon Legion as well. Um, and this this very similar to... Um, where the hell are you? Growth Chamber Guardian um, is a card that can pack a punch by itself. Uh, my worry was just that um, it's combined with Guardian would, would hunger for my mana too much. Um, it's possible that having Night of the Ebon Legion is more correct, but I don't actually know. Um, I don't have enough ETBs for me to think Charming Prince is most important. Containment Priest doesn't really do anything I care about. Um, I have too many things for Thalia and Vryn Mare to be good. Oh, I think I called it... What did I call this? Diminish? Eliminate is the card I was thinking of, by the way. Um, 
right now I'm still fun in Heartless Act. Um, Voracious Hydra isn't a two drop, which is which is something I had to come to terms with. Like I really like Voracious Hydra, uh, the versatility in this card. This is the word again. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this video like versatility or something. Um, is is really nice, but it it is not a two drop unfortunately. Bright Headline is great. You know, two minute uh, three three. I'm not sure about it. Um, other things that I'm like legitimately considering. Jade Light Ranger is a bit more green than I'd like, considering I'm also playing um, Moomin Rider. Uh, ta -ta -ta. The four drop slot, I was I was legitimately considering Solemn because it can fix my mana. It ramps me a little bit, so I can get from four to six a bit easier. Um, and when it dies, I get to draw a card. Like those are all things I like and I might want to do. So more and more I do I do consider Solemn as a decent pick. Um, but you also like you just have Vraska, Sorin, Seraph of the Scales, like there as I said, like the four drop slot is totally stacked. And it was very difficult for me to excuse me, um narrow it down. Uh even like taking out um Luminous Broodmoth was difficult. Um I'm very happy so far with my fives. Um even though Gargoth like didn't really get to, to see it shine, itself shine. Um, yeah, so, I'm not sure. A lot of, a lot of choices to be had. But I hope you all, uh, enjoy this Abzan road that I took you on. Um, if you have any input on, uh, Abzan mid-range and historic, um, main deck, sideboard, any of that stuff, um, I'm absolutely open to, to information on that. Um, for those of you who are used to my, uh, well, I guess for those of you technically who have not watched my bolus videos, because uh, this this definitely uh, has a lot of bolus energy, um, and you've just seen like the the jank videos that I put out. Uh, this is me when I'm actually trying to win. Uh, I think my voice is a little deeper. I'm not actually entirely sure, but um, this is this is how it be. Um, I just realized I did a dumb because tomorrow is the FNM at home singleton event. Oh wait, never mind. This is this is only sixty card. Okay, because um, my I, I need to update my Gladiator deck, which is going, which is also Abzan. Um, and I thought if this was a hundred card, then it essentially just be my Gladiator deck, and it would be Abzan. But it's not, so it's sixty card. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Is this historic or standard? You have not, you have not told me. Standard. Okay, so it's standard. Which is kind of lame, but whatevs. Uh, anyway, I would like to thank my lovely patrons for continued support. If you'd like to join them and support the show, uh, it really does help. <laughs> Especially in these trying times. Um, you'll find links that down in the description. I hope, of course, you've enjoyed this video. If you did, tap that like button. Add subscription to your mana pool. Cast the comments in the comment section down below. And of course, until next time, I'll be one.